first rule of science, robot fails are funny. But to a roboticist like Katherine Kuchenbecker, watching this is actually terrifying. Without a sense of touch, robots can't work with humans. Without haptics, like 90% of robot movies are dead on arrival. And without an investment in the future of haptics, humans can't interact with the digital world in the way that is most instinctive to us, by touching it. As the new director of the Max Planck Institute for Haptic Intelligence, Kuchenbecker understands what's at stake here, and she's using the Institute's 70 million euro investment to propel haptics into the future. A future where there is more interactivity with the things we digitally create, and less hardware in the way of touching them. I think we're past the, the point of haptics being a, a niche area. Just like when televisions were black and white, people said, wow, this is amazing. This is the best television ever. And then it became color and you were like, oh my gosh, how did I live without color? The real world is color. It might sound like you're stating the obvious, but touch is arguably the only sense you could not live without. Touch is how you map the world you live in. We're already so used to using haptic tech that you probably don't even know that it is the reason you feel like you touch a button on your phone when a button like that doesn't actually exist. The haptic market for smartphones and small consumer devices itself is projected to be a $20 billion market by 2022. Now imagine the size of that when haptics are everywhere. In your car, in movie theaters, in schools where we train doctors, in the robots in your home. But it is an underrated art. Feeling touch as a computer is not easy to make happen. We've made major strides so far, but most larger haptics that involve VR or big ticket items that you want to touch are usually grounded and not very portable. Plus, there's usually some sort of intermediary that's a hassle to handle. Uncomfortable gloves, bulky haptics pens, shirts with plastic and metal and sensors that you can feel all over the place. The real far-fetched future of haptics is what's known as contactless haptics, and it is exactly what it sounds like. Through the use of ultrasound, lasers, and I assume a space wizard, you can feel physically feel something without a device. In a weird way to the lay consumer, it's almost like creating and changing matter itself. Just imagine, the more perfect contactless haptics becomes, the more integrated in our lives it could be. You could look at a t-shirt on Amazon and feel the fabric before you buy it. You could swim in a VR ocean and feel the rough scales of the shark that brushes past your arm. Touch is different from vision and hearing in that it's, it's interactive. But I see other investments that governments, agencies are making in haptics, whether it's DARPA and their interest in touch feedback for prosthetics, like direct to the nerve, letting people with a prosthesis feel what their prosthetic hand is feeling, or wearable robots for gait rehabilitation and exoskeletons and hand rehabilitation. And yes, while this tech isn't market ready yet, people have already had the chance to experience experience a hologram, to touch it, and to have the distinct feeling that it exists in space. According to experts in the haptics field, the next step beyond perfecting hardware design is really going to be about thinking small, very small. We're talking about increasing the fidelity of contact points a haptic device could interpret from a human. That way, our fingertips don't just register as one point to a programmer robot, but thousands. In the next few years, maybe we'll see fewer robot fails. In a few years after that, maybe haptics will change the small electronics that you carry around in your pocket every day. And in a few years after that, maybe we'll see the world of haptics as the explosive revolution it is. Just like a color TV leaving us with our jaws on the floor and never able to accept seeing the world as black and white again.